Does Sydney want to lead in the movement? Will World Pride be more than a party? Yeah, World Pride will absolutely be more than a party and that was really one of the value propositions um, of why we won. Post-marriage equality, there was certainly a sense of, I think, relief and perhaps, a, and definitely accomplishment. We've got a lot of change and transition uh, amongst the community, but particularly amongst uh, Mardi Gras. If anyone can make a crowd tear up with a netball analogy, that's Kate Wicked. Welcome. Hi Kyriakos, how are you? I'm good, really good, really excited. This Pride Month is a bit special, don't you think? I think every Pride Month is special. Um, I think it's special for Sydney this year. We've got a lot of change and transition uh, amongst the community, but particularly amongst uh, Mardi Gras. We've got a new CEO, uh, we've won World Pride, so I think it's a really exciting time for, for our community in Sydney. It certainly is. When was the, the first moment you connected with the community but on, on, on pride level? When, what, what was that magical moment for you? Uh, I was 19. I was a little girl from Adelaide. Um, I was at university. I'd come out when I was 16 uh, and coming out in Adelaide back in the 90s. Yeah, I'm from Adelaide. I know how it is. Yeah, like it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't the greatest place or, uh, and there wasn't a lot of support. So. I remember vividly a friend said to me I should go off to Mardi Gras so I saved up all my money and, and flew to Mardi Gras and I came to Sydney on the Wednesday before the parade and uh, a girlfriend picked me up and we went to Oxford Street and you know that was back in the day when Oxford Street was very much alive um, and I stood up out the front of the Columbian Hotel in the corner of Crown and Oxford Street and I looked up the street and there were pride flags everywhere uh, the street was uh, bustling and it was a really overwhelming feeling for me because for the first time I understood what it was to be around people like me and uh, that sense of community uh, was very emotional and very poignant for me. So that, that, that moment that your smile gets so big that you start crying? Yeah, I did um, have some tears <laughs> well up uh, and I think actually that was probably a seminal point in my life because that's when I decided that I never wanted anyone else to feel as alone or um, as isolated as I did uh, growing up and certainly even in Adelaide at uni at that time and so I decided then that I would do everything that I could to help the Pride movement. Well, CEO of World Pride, key leader in the bead, super speech in Athens, do you feel you're an activist? Do you feel the leadership position that you hold? Uh, that's very kind of you to say. I think, um, I think leadership is shown in different ways, but I have, I'm a firm believer that uh, people should lead by example. Uh, and it's easy to talk rhetoric and easy to talk about leadership. Um, I'm really interested in people actually following through and you know, actions speak louder than words. Make Will Sydney make it? Can, does Sydney have not just the passion, um, does Sydney want to lead in the movement? Will World Pride be more than a party? Yeah, World Pride will absolutely be more than a party and that was really one of the value propositions um, of why we won. Um, this isn't just about Sydney, this is about Mardi Gras and its 42 year history taking a leadership role uh, in the region and, and shining a light on all of the diverse parts of our communities, not just in Australia, but in the Asia Pacific. Um, and I think it's a really great opportunity for us to unite together. And, and frankly, that's what our community has been doing for, for decades, is coming together in times of crisis or in times uh, that are difficult and uniting. I think the marriage equality campaign was a, a, a most recent example of that. Uh, but I think World Pride's going to allow us to unite the region. Are we winning or do we live under the illusion of progress? I think progress is evolving. I think progress means different things to different people. It's interesting because post-marriage equality, there was certainly a sense of, I think, relief and perhaps, a, and definitely accomplishment but you know the religious discrimination bill is certainly at our door. Um, we see uh, different laws around the world being 
um, pulled back with respect to our community. So I think progress is, you know, by, by its very nature, has to continue. You said before every Pride Month is special, and that's absolutely right, but this Pride Month, I personally feel a shift in the global conversation, in the global arena. Mm -hmm. George Floyd's murder, uh, a lot of American politics coming through our social media walls. Uh, how, where do you sit in that conversation? How does it affect us? And what is the component in Australia that is super relevant and what do we need to do? Uh, one of the other value propositions or the things that we really wanted to do with World Pride was um, focus on our own First Nations community here in Australia. Um, what became really apparent to me travelling around the world last year during the lobbying and campaign for World Pride was that not only did actually lots of people not know much about Australia um, and our history, they certainly didn't know much about our First Nations history. And I think that uh, World Pride provides a fantastic opportunity for us to um, educate uh, not just people from overseas, but also educate ourselves around um, our, our First Nations history, but our queer First Nations people as well. Um, it certainly is something that we're very committed to at World Pride, um, and we've been speaking with our First Nations people here in Sydney around really what how do they want to shape World Pride? And I think that's something that we're very committed to about First Nations people designing and producing events for First Nations. So, by mob, for mob. I love that. By mob, for mob. By mob, for mob. Let's go back in time, okay? Let's go back to 19 year old Kate. Mm. We are outside the Colombian and you have the magical power to be a voice in her ear and say something. What would that be? Drink less. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, to the point. As always, we get to the point. <laughs> uh, drink less, but uh, uh, one of the things that I have thought in my life is that I'd rather regret something that I've done that I haven't. And I'm really, um, really happy with some of the kind of risks that I've taken. I mean, I very much believe that all of the exciting stuff in life happens when you're outside of your comfort zone. Uh, and so I, I try to live my life that way. I get bored very easily. Um, but I think being very true to who you, who you are, uh, people use the word authentic a lot. I actually think it's just being who you are. Um, and I think people see, uh, see straight through people who try and be something that they're not. Um, I've lived a very fortunate life. I've met some wonderful people and uh, I've danced on many dance floors at prides around the world. And I think uh, one of my dreams when I was actually younger was that one day I would be paid to go <laughs> and travel the Dream world. Job. Dream I job. Dream job. I love my job, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what would I say to my 19 year old self is just be, have, the, have, the, have the fortitude to be who you are. And I go in the future, in one year from now, what would be the, the, the first thing you'd change from this Pride to next Pride? Anything, you, it could be anything, it could be world peace. Well, I think, I mean, COVID's obviously changed the landscape of Prides. Um, and I think that I would really love for us to be able to come together uh, intimately and, and as close as we are. Um, I think that's one of the beautiful things about Mardi Gras and certainly the after party is that, you know, there are 14,000 people that are all there for the same reason and that's to celebrate. Uh, and I, I don't think you can get that um, when you're not close together. I think there's a, a beautiful intimacy about being under the mirror ball with 5,000 people sweaty, hot, celebrating, and everyone has just uh, just got this um, beautiful uh, kind I of I knew the conversation would go to the disco ball at some stage. <laughs> so let's set a date. Under the disco ball at Mardi Gras? This year or? 2021. Are you asking me out on a date? Yeah. I think we've danced under it. <laughs> um, I enjoyed dancing under the disco ball with you in Athens. That was, you know, where we first met and fell in love and, you know, it's been a beautiful relationship since. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing Mardi Gras over the next couple of years. I think, as I said, there's going to be a great transitional yeah. period. Um, we've got great new leadership um, and some real vision uh, for the next couple of years leading into, into World Pride. But, you know, let's not forget uh, Mardi Gras will exist well beyond 2023. And I think the next couple of years will really set the foundation for the longevity of our organisation. We're 42 years old. We're, we're oh, a fan... 43. <laughs> <laughs> we're a fantastic organisation and I think it's going to be uh, really exciting to see how that happens over the next couple of years. If those two, Pride and Mardi Gras, were relatives, what would they be? Definitely mum and dad. Um, <laughs> uh, brother, sister. Uh, Albert and I um, often talk about um, hand in glove. And sometimes I'm the glove, sometimes he's the hand. Right, this is getting out of control. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for coming. Thanks, Kyriakos. Tonight